This is Kingdom Sound TV. You are welcome. On this channel, we will share content of our father and mentor, Apostle Joshua Selman. As you listen, remain ever blessed. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. It's my joy again to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, first and foremost, I'd like you to help me bless the Lord for Pastor Jerry and his wife. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then, please, let's honor Dr. David Obueli. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm here only but for a short time. And I pray that this moment will bless our hearts. Tonight is truly a moment of unusual encounters. Father, help us. We depend on you. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let your life of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom that it reign in us. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the life of your glory fall. Let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us. Let the weight of your glory help us, Holy Spirit, open our eyes that we may see. To see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. Spirit, that you will speak so that our hearts will hear, lift us to higher dimensions in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Please be seated. I'll just give a charge and then we'll pray and I'll be back to my seat and we trust that the session will have with the man of God who will be most inspiring. He's a veteran of the gospel. He truly understands the kingdom. And I pray that your heart will be open as we learn. But I just want to touch on just a little charge. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar, there was a tribe of Issachar. And the Bible says that these men had understanding of the times and that they knew what Israel ought to do. It's dangerous to not know what to do. There are three levels of the anointing that comes upon believers. The first level comes upon a believer according to scripture when you are grafted into Christ in the experience that we call the new birth. Are we together now? There is an unction that is upon a believer by reason of his being grafted into Christ. Number two, there is an anointing that comes upon a believer by reason of his office. 
please listen very carefully that when god calls a man there is a backing there are a number of things that follow the call of god upon a man one of it is the empowerment that is sent to honor that office alongside that anointing there are angelic cadres that signify the revelation given to that person Revelations 1 verse 1 says the revelation of Jesus Christ which he gave unto his servant John he said and he sent it and signified it by his angel are we together now these angels excel in strength and they walk within the coordinates of that call number 3 now listen carefully the third level of the anointing comes upon a man by reason of going through the sacrifice of alignment to be part of God's program per season that is not the anointing that comes upon you just because you are a believer that is not the anointing that comes upon you just because of your office that anointing comes as a testament a product of diligence the sacrifice of discerning like habakkuk he says i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower that i will see what the lord will say so that you are able to discern what the spirit of god is doing in a season and when you pay the price to walk in peace with the holy spirit there is a dimension of reward is a grace that is upon you that makes you relevant as far as the program of god is concerned in that season so it is possible to not be captured in the current dealings of god this is not about backsliding you can still be a believer your office can still be there but as far as the current dealings of god is concerned you did not pursue as proof of your interest and he will honor your will by leaving you at that realm are we blessed yes i say that because i presume that many of us here are born again and there is a dimension of engracing that has come by reason of our being grafted into Christ then i presume that there are many ministers servants of god people who have answered the call some who have been in the ministry for a while truly there is a grace upon you by reason of your call but there is what god is doing in this season he says worthy is the lamb that was slain and when he was worshiped they called him the god who was who is and who is to come these are dimensions knowing the god who was is good but is not enough there is still the god who is are we together there is this present truth what god is doing within this season and i believe that this conference seeks to bring us to not just receive miracle signs and wonders as important as that is but to position us to reveal to us by the spirit the current dealings of the spirit across the nation so that we can understand like the sons of Issachar and know how to align with what God is doing are we together this is very important i'm very passionate about knowing what god is doing because his grace doesn't just honor men his grace honors his program god's grace moves in the direction of his program it looks like he's looking for men but he's only looking for men who are following the program the grace will not come to you just because you want it it will come with respect to your diligent pursuit of god's program when i sent thee lackest thou anything not when you went when i sent thee are we blessed the second thing that i want to touch very quickly is by the grace of god i have been a student of revivals i have been a student of the move of god i have studied the move of god across the continents of the earth i have had the privilege 
to meet a few people who were mightily used by God. Some in their lifetime still alive, some have gone to be with the Lord. And I have found out that revivals and the move of God for some reason does not seem to last long enough to deliver that which was intended. Are we together now? So here and there you have a sudden outpouring of the Spirit. The move of God across a territory. Mighty things are happening. Apostles and prophets rising. All kinds of things happening. And then because there is deficiency in accurate knowledge on how to capture and preserve revivals. The move of God becomes aborted through carelessness, insensitivity, and the humanity of men. So if you would give me 10 minutes, I want to just share something about preserving the move of God. It is not enough to pray for revivals. It is not enough to enjoy the presence of revivals. We must, we must understand the spiritual technology are located for preserving revivals. This is what will make a move of God transgenerational so that children will not say, parents, we once heard that there was a move of God here. Uh -uh. The nation of Israel, every time they encountered God, he would mandate that they captured his dealings and archived them through several formulas, either in scrolls or build a monument around that experience. He said, when your children ask you, tell them, this is what happened. If we do not know how to preserve revivals, there will be a generation that will arise that will not honor the God that we so lavishly pursue. Are we blessed? There are principles and patterns in the scripture that preserve revivals. This gospel we have received today have been preserved through the ages by a technology we must not lose. Respectfully speaking, this was the mistake of the Western nations. When God was moving through their parents and their grandparents, they were enjoying and pushing these revivals, but they did not create a system for continuity. So when Satan found out he could not do anything with all the evangelists, and these people were almost beyond backsliding. They had committed themselves and pledged their lives. He left them and came patiently to their children and grew with that generation. The generation he grew with are the captains of industry today. The generation he grew with. Listen, let me tell you. If you are not part of the growth process of a man, don't expect to be featured when he gets to the palace. A generation will only be loyal to who was there when they were rising. Coming up arbitrarily with an information and an idea, an attempt and wanting a generation to give you attention when you were not there. So Satan knows this. And he came and was patient for over three decades. Growing patiently with those we used to call children. Growing patiently. And he, he brought them and showed them a route to success without God. And in the equation of their lives, they are yet to see the need for God. And if we are not careful, that same pattern will come to Africa. Where Satan will give up on the current move. And say, I give up. You keep serving your God while I prepare for tomorrow. Preserving revivals. Ali is Kali Baratia. And you pray in the spirit in one minute. Sikes Kali Barusha La Branda Sikatania Hasabrach. Hallelujah. When Jesus rose again, the Bible says he was with the disciples for a period of 40 days, according to Acts, that he was teaching them on the things or the matters of the kingdom. Are we together now? And then he told them, they asked him a question. They said, Will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? 
and he said it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his care verse 8 says but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you now listen carefully it says when that activity happens to you it will turn you to become witnesses not men of god not business people no the titles are simply the geography of the assignment but our mandate corporately is to be witnesses a witness is a validator of a claim you do not need a witness until there is a contention when you go to the court of law are we together now if you say this happened and someone is objecting the judge will say introduce a witness the assignment of a witness is to concretize conviction to make sure that everybody all and sundry believe that that proposition was not a lie so the bible says your assignment is to be witnesses and then he now told you that as witnesses you are mandated to be witnesses in jerusalem judea samaria and then to the utmost part and to do that you shall receive power the first thing that happens to you is that the holy spirit comes power is not the first thing that happens the personality of the holy spirit is introduced to your life there is something he does before power comes you have to understand that scripture are we together yes jesus was speaking about the holy spirit and he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you even for truth you must be guided because truth can still mislead it's not a lie alone that deceives the truth when not guided can lead you into error so just because it is true does not mean it is profitable you must be guided everything that destroys the body of christ today came from truth not a lie error is truth that is stretched within its beyond its boundary of relevance so the holy spirit has an assignment to not just give you truth but to guide you to set the coordinates for their profitability in your life that means there is something you should know before knowing about prosperity if you don't know it and you just jump to it the lack of that prior knowledge will make that truth to not profit you this is not even where i'm going to i have a few minutes listen carefully that the holy spirit was sent to the church as the guarantee that revivals can be preserved not just introduced we know the holy spirit as an introducer of the move of god but very few people know him as the preserver but generally speaking there are principles i will just touch on one and then we'll pray the first spiritual principle that preserves the move of god across a territory is the ministry of prayer prayer the warfare and the intercessory dimension of prayer is one of the kingdom mysteries that can preserve the move of god transgenerationally prayer does not only bring the move of god in the early church they had prayer cells they had prayer groups they didn't just converge to break bread alone they converge to pray did you know that the one thing satan fought in babylon was prayer that a parliament came together to meet as though they were meeting about a state affair but it was really because the prayer of daniel as a single individual was doing something to the spirits of the medes and the persians that ruled over the second heavens and a parliament under the influence of those spirits came together that for only
Hallelujah. When this system, this antichrist system that was encapsulated in a woman called Jezebel appeared to fight the purposes of God, then God now sent his prophetic system. I taught you yesterday, the spiritual system that restores the patterns of God. That system is called Elijah. Not just the man, Elijah. Elijah was an embodiment of that system. He used the weapon of prayer to preserve the purposes of God. It was at a time when the prophets of God were in hiding. Why? Because there was a system in a woman called Jezebel. I told you Jezebel is a system that only is activated when she sits with government. It's a system that fights influence.
the person to increase the volume of the phone and place it right beside the dead woman. And as the testimony was eventually going to enter, and the person said that as soon as they heard that, meanwhile, and to align but you must trust God for grace to fan your prayer altar once again for he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint and you must trust God for the grace not to neglect the corporate gathering of the saints not for the purpose of a religious ritual for the purpose of enlightenment submitting yourself to the doctrine of the apostles to grow according to Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. To be filled with the knowledge of his will. To be filled with all wisdom and with all spiritual understanding. This is the purpose of that convergence. And then number three, to trust God. Not just to receive miracles, but to become a conduit. That you will be able to hold superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God. This and more remain the keys the irrefutable keys that will preserve god and his purposes in our life can i pray for you spare me five minutes pastor just to say a word of prayer For me the lady that shouts under the anointing loud to the hearing of everyone the power of god is coming on a lady very loud bring her father i stretch my hands over your feet in the name of jesus the christ the son of the living god i pray for you i stretch my hands from the left to the right all across this auditorium and in the name of jesus you are the people i prayed for yesterday my dear your wife lift your hands i know i prayed for you yesterday but there is a prophetic dimension god is bringing you into in the name of jesus i declare over you take that fire now you will never be the same i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ i pray for you the spirit of prophecy the bowels of the spirit that as many who are called into that dimension right now in the name of jesus take that grace i shift you by the spirit step into those dimensions in the spirit in the name of jesus the son of the living god i place grace upon your life the eyes that see and the ears that hear in the name of jesus christ and i declare the spirit of revelation accurate understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom in the name of jesus may your eyes be open to see may your eyes be open to see may your eyes be open to see I declare anyone here under any yoke of darkness that is not of the Christ. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God, every spirit that is foreign, help that man, I command that devil out of your life now. Out of your life now. I speak to every closed door like your team says, every door that has refused to open. In the name of Jesus, I join my faith with the graces and the servants of God here. And we speak to those gates and doors, a father be open. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm wrapping up. In Acts chapter 12, the Bible says, Peter was bound hand and feet. And prayer went on for his sake. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord came and the chains fell. And he passed through three gates. The first gate out of the prison. 
the second gate he says he got to a gate called the iron gate that opens to the city there are gates that control influence that when that gate is open the next thing you see is the city i declare over someone my bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder the gates that opens for your kingdom influence i stand by the spirit of grace and i decree and declare let it be open now in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you that desire that you brought we do not seek the lord just because of things however in his presence there there are tokens consolations proofs of his love his power and his majesty i release my faith with you that everything that you came with as a request let it be turned now into a testimony in the name of the lord jesus now please listen please listen as Dr. David Ogwele comes up, please, I want you to sit down and learn the doctrine and the ways of the kingdom. Refuse to be distracted, sit with all your heart, pay attention and hear the counsel of God. The truths of the kingdom are the keys that release the power of God. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4, it says, in that light that came out of his hands, there was the hiding place of his power the power of god is found in his light are we together now so please all together thank you for all of this time but i want you to settle down and let us listen so that we are sound in doctrine we are built we are matured in the things of the spirit for this is why he gave the gift that we are perfected we are thoroughly built that we are no more tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men. Are we together now? Pastor Jerry, thank you. And thank your lovely wife. I appreciate you. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Please, can we be seated in the presence of God? I want to tell us one more time that a season has been birthed upon us and um, please let's sit protocol sit everyone sit um, once again I want to let us know that another move of God is about to be birthed one more time please can can we say God bless you apostle
Joshua Selman Nemac is the president of Eternity Network International, an interdenominational apostolic ministry which started out in Daria Kaduna State but is now based in the federal capital territory of Nigeria, Abuja. Motivated by his deep love for the body of Christ, Apostle Selman regularly teaches believers across various denominations with unusual insights into God's word and his ministrations are marked with awesome manifestations of God's power. He is the host of Koinonia, a weekly program that attracts thousands of people desiring to experience worship, word, miracles, love and true intimacy with the Holy Spirit, deepening their fellowship with God and preparing them to fulfill their divine destiny. A mentor and father to many, Selman is fondly loved and regarded by thousands of young adults across the nation and beyond as the model and icon of the next generation. By default, there is no advantage anywhere for any man. You introduce systems of advantage into your destiny as you go. The first of them being salvation. It's like making do with whatever grows in a farm and what grows in a farm without being planted is weak. So I come from a family, for instance, with no advantage. And now it is my responsibility under God to understand God and His ways and then introduce to my destiny systems of advantage that begin to correct errors that I met. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and make welcome Apostle Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It's my joy to be here and I truly am honored to be in your city. Hallelujah. Please, while standing, help me appreciate Pastor Jerry and his wonderful wife. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And an amazing, amazing man of God. And the wonderful things that he's doing. You know, while he was talking about me, I wish I had the chance to tell him, I hope you know that you are describing yourself to me. Praise the name of the Lord. Truly, I celebrate what God is doing in this city through this great vessel of God. The lives that have been changed, destinies transformed. I think we can honor Him one more time. God bless you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul Worship His holy name Father tonight in the name of your son Jesus Christ we pray that you will do mighty things in our midst. We have come with our hearts open. We have come with hunger. We have come to receive. We have come to be transformed. We have come to be imparted. We decree and declare tonight that there is the hearing of faith and also the working of miracles. Lord, I thank you because no life represented here, inside and outside, following online, will be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. You love prayer. Can we pray for a minute or two? Please lift your voice and pray in the Spirit. Oh, 
Kataka Parata Kato Sate Palato Sekete Prandas Kate Palakata Shekete Pras Sada Shalanda Prato Sekete Palada Palata Hoxi Shekete Pakata Prando Sazeva Katala Hosiapa Shekete Pahuto Sopran Teke Palato Sieta let your spirit be open. Shanda sabarato salika ta branda gata barutia. Shikreti ke diwala taba. Shikete pakato skela panda shela. Shikete pakata branda gatu siata. Shikete bekete palada balada box. Sipari sebari ta shalatu skabadiata. I release the sound of the heavens, sound of creation, Yahweh is here. I release the sound of the heavens, sound of creation, Yahweh is here. I cry holy. Holy, holy, unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. Shalibarakato saprandege debaradusiata. Shileparuska debarutasia. Don't be tired, it's part of the meeting. Skimende shalentos kabaruta shabragete kofos. Shigeba kato sali branda kato segete lekata. Shalabarata kata branda kata paruske bereketo shiata. Shileparuta siata. Shibarakato sali branda kata bariata. Streams of joy. Abia state. Pray your way to a new dimension in the spirit. Haya, haya, ha, he, he, he. Haya, haya, ha, he. Let me prophesy upon your life. You will never be the same. His grace, your life is changed. Hallelujah. We are going to sit down shortly, but the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire resting. I'm seeing the number 34. Inside and outside, I stretch my hands. Please help anyone under the anointing. I stretch my hands. Here at this conference, the grace and the unction of the Spirit. Take that grace now. Please help them. Take that grace now. From the front to the back. Paris Koberekata. Shalepa Katos Kepata. Embrekete Parus Kobetos Shalepa. Iparatos Kia. All of the overflows. Drink of this fountain. Let it shift you to new dimensions in the Spirit. Please help this lady. Shalekatas kabaruzete, embra kate 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 kate. Shali parunto kovariata. Sir, touch this man for me. Look at me. Lift your hands. There is an anointing coming on you. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands upon you. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I learned my faith with Pastor Jerry. God is doing something in this place tonight. I assure you that you will never be the same. Never be the same. Informer, informer, who is informer? I'm hearing a name, informer. The angel of the Lord is telling me she's in this room. Informer, is there someone like that? 
Your name is Ifoma. Where are you coming from, madam? Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You live here. For now, yes. No, no, no. Just, just take it easy, my dear. Please. Let's just let's be organized about this. I want to pray for you. My dear, look at me. This lady. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Take that grace now. You will never be the same. I cast that spirit out of your life forever. In the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Stand up. Here at this ministry, you will never forget this conference. I look at you and I see oppression around your life. And the Lord is saying, let it go now. I cast that spirit once and for all. Once I cast that spirit out of her destiny. Hear me. If there is anything that followed you here, I stand by the God of heaven, joining faith with your pastor under this apostolic and prophetic grace. I declare that that, that spirit must give way tonight. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray. Enough is enough. I speak and I declare that here upon this mountain, everything that does not represent the counsel of the Christ, here at Streams of Joy, we make decrees by the Spirit that it comes to an end. Praise you will soon be seated. Am, am I fine? Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring the lady that will shout now under the anointing, loud to the hearing of everyone. Please, I want to talk to her. The power of God is coming on a lady now. Bring her. Shalan Sadas Cobrate Sede Pahoria Shalagada Parado Zikete Brende Coscalabrati. Taking the pain and the sorrow away, you've given me peace on the night. No need to cry, cause you're always with me. You're my father, my heir. It's your language, sing it. Oh, man, my. Shalabarus Kadibran, the Gediparatis. Shekete Baruda Siata Balakata. Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody, in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, the chant of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Madam, where are you coming from? Just, you are, I'm seeing, what do you have to do with Abuja? Give her a mic. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming Abuja. from? Abuja. Abuja. Yes, sir. The Lord is about to change your life. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but thank God who ordered your step. Yes. I stretch my hands now. In the name of Jesus, fresh grace. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Taking the pain and the sorrow Giving me peace on the night Ma, I want to pray for you That no infirmity 
will stand your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Is it alright if I talk to you, ma? I want to pray that the devil, please don't come out at random. Please. Please. There's no space here. I'll soon send a few people back so that we can teach. I'm looking at this woman and I'm seeing a serpent out of her destiny now. Out now. In the name of Jesus. Release her destiny. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Did the Bible not say blotting out every handwriting he says and every ordinance that spoke against us your bible declares that he nailed it to his cross hallelujah my mind the name of jesus christ i stand in faith with pastor jerry and we speak over your body the life the power of jesus christ destroys every trace and every planting of darkness over your body for the bible declares that every tree that has not been planted by my father that that tree will be uprooted we uproot it right now and forever in the name of jesus christ for all of you who are here for whatever reason i can't even remember why you are here again but in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the hand of god you will go back free you will go back with liberty in the name of jesus christ May the grace of God speak over your life. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Please return back rejoicing. Hallelujah. You'll be seated shortly. Am I wasting your time? There is a pastor here. You came with such a hunger. I'm seeing an anointing of the Spirit resting upon you now. You are, I'm not saying you are going into ministry. You are in ministry. I don't know if it's this city. The Spirit of God, the hand of God will come upon that man. I just want to talk to him right now. You are a pastor in ministry. And when that anointing comes upon you, it will shift your ministry to a new level in the Spirit. Sir, are you husband and wife? Lift your hands, both of you. Hold your hands and lift it. Lift it. Look at me. I don't know two of you. Are, are, are they, they are pastors in this city? From Port Harcourt. You believe in the power of the anointing? I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace. Two of you. Step into a new dimension of ministry. Signs. Wonders. Miracles. By the Spirit of God. Taking the pain and the sorrow away Giving me peace undeniable There's no need to cry cause you're always with me Bless our hearts tonight, oh God Please sit down if you can My dear, you are a member of this church? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the spirit. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what you do. But two things are going to happen to you. Number one, there is a multiplication of the grace for the prophetic. This is what I'm seeing by the spirit. And number two, the unction for favor is coming upon you. I stretch my hands by the spirit of grace. Step into that season. Step into that level. I take away limitations from your destiny by the spirit of grace. Can I tell you this? Happy are you when you find the grace sent to you. Not the grace available. The grace sent to you. There are words that are spoken, but there are words that are sent. It's such an honor to be part of this great assembly. Many of you may not know the kinds of transactions that are happening in the realm of the spirit. It is what is upon you that controls what is around you. What is around you is merely a report card. It's speaking to you and telling you what is upon you. 
so whilst we explore the word just for a few minutes our time is already gone i'll respect the time just to touch on something tonight and then we'll pray but i like for your heart to be sensitive because whilst the word of god is coming forth the spirit of god is hovering like he always does within this auditorium and then even outside of this auditorium to all the overflows and our family watching online globally just open up your heart to receive there are impartations you see before you receive from a grace study it study the operation and the dynamics of the spirit connected to that grace so that you can maximize it if you come to a church like this you study the operation of God's working in your pastor that will help you to know how to receive praise the name of the Lord so let hope rise darkness trembles in your own here let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your own listen to me Ephesians chapter 3 Pastor, when Paul began to teach the church in Ephesus, part of his apostolic ministry, helping to mentor and to build the church. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul began to speak about the basis of his ability to communicate spiritual things. And Paul began to speak to the people to say how that it was by revelation he was granted access to what he calls the fellowship of the mystery like occultism as though you were initiated to be a partaker of a body of spiritual truth and he said among the many graces that were given to him there was a strange one found in verse 9 verse 9 says there is a grace that can make all men see is a grace that supplies spiritual illumination and compels you to comprehend spiritual things regardless your intellectual limitations it's an option because you see when we're dealing with spiritual things we are not just dealing with matters of intellect uh -uh. it is a realm that flesh and blood cannot comprehend he told peter flesh and blood has not revealed this so that dimension of revelation is higher than the realm that flesh and blood reveals are we together now yes so he says to make all men see that whilst you are in an atmosphere like this suddenly the truths of scripture begin to open up to you and your eyes your 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 mind begins to comprehend these truths because in this kingdom it is as far as your eyes can see it says lift up your eyes from where thou art as far as your eyes can see then it is given unto you so can we look to the word of god for a minute or two i have a number of things that i desire to share my assignment by the grace of god is that every time God grants me the privilege to go to a territory my assignment basically is by the spirit of grace to stand and support that which God is doing through the vessels within that territory and to do that by helping to supply dimensions of spiritual reality that can help strengthen the body of Christ within that territory because you see a true apostolic grace is not a ministerial grace it is an administrative grace 
a true apostolic grace is mandated with the responsibility of coordinating the spiritual activities within a dispensation that means that by the election of grace you are granted the privilege to see to it that the body of spiritual knowledge allocated for a generation is effectively dispensed so god supplies all of the spiritual arsenals that need to back you so that you are efficient in supplying those dimensions and it is an honor an honor to be granted this privilege and this grace by god to be a contributor a strengthener a lifter of the hands of men in the body hallelujah praise the name of the lord so let's discuss a few things i want to teach very briefly wherever we stop tonight we'll pray on spiritual patterns please pay attention to this teaching i believe by the grace of god that in addition to that which your pastor has labored and continues to labor communicating to you so that you are strengthened that this truth alongside all the servants of god who have come and will be coming that together as a coordinated army that god will supply something in this conference that will shift you in reality to the next dimension one thing i must commend about this church sir is that you are a passionate people who are full of faith the faith of god is palpable within this assembly it is true that you believe what you say hallelujah praise the name of the lord jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 when we have it projected and you can see it please read ready read thus saith the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path where is the good way and walk therein and you shall find listen 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 don't rush the bible shows us here that for the believer there is a relationship between asking walking and rest that the pathway to rest starts when you ask then when you are shown you obtain grace to walk in that path and then you will find rest are we together now now all across the globe there are men and women who continue to press towards spiritual things in hope that they will be able to find the principles of the kingdom that are responsible for the various outcomes that we desire all over the world pastor from the u.s to asia to europe to africa men and women continue to search for the keys that control the various dimensions of possibilities in the kingdom for others they seek to know the dynamics that is responsible for the miraculous for others they want to search for the principles that control the blessing of the lord upon the life of a believer in reality for others they seek to find out the keys that are responsible for influence and access like you so greatly prophesied where kings agree that you are king over them the bible says several men came to david in the cave of adulam and that they said that they submitted himself to be king over them are we together now as you might have heard me say this kingdom that we are part of is a compendium of infinite possibilities you have to agree on this are we together now that the possibilities that are in this kingdom are as vast as god himself and that means that in the entire span of a believer's journey whatever you are able to capture throughout your lifetime becomes 
your the frame of your understanding of who God is and how far he's able to take you are we together now and that the theology that your life will write will be based on your perspective about God and so all through history we've had people come up with different ideas about who God is and the pathway that makes for victory in the kingdom Others as a result of their prolonged frustrations have found ways to shut down certain names of God because of their experiences. They have lived long on the earth and have not been able to capture certain dimensions of God. And so to them those dimensions no longer exist. It is dangerous to teach from the frame of your limitation. The Bible says in Acts chapter 18 that there was a man called Apollos. The Bible says he was a mighty man who was fervent in scripture. The kind of man every pastor will be looking for. The Bible says, but he knew only the baptism of John. One day he came for a conference like this and believed he was impressing everybody. And yet there were two strange people who sat in that congregation called Aquila and Priscilla while they listened to him vent out his limitation they appreciated his passion but the Bible says after that service they held him and expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly so if Apollos had written an epistle you will be misled passionately written the, reading the limitation of a man you see let me tell you this one of the challenges with the body of Christ, and I say this respectfully, is that many times limitations and create doctrines out of them. And we mentor people from the vista of our limitation. And from one generation to one gen another generation, we begin to close the gap. Or we begin to close the opportunity for God to manifest His vastness. So if I never experience favor in my life, everyone who is mentored by me will be mentored to disregard that reality. If I do not experience speed in my life, I, I convert my pain to a theology. And now I teach it so that whoever should have, should release his faith for more of God, now is compelled as a proof of his loyalty to my ideology. He now sabotages an opportunity to step into the fullness of God. I hope you understand what I'm saying. This is not a call to sarcasm. This is a believer's conference. We are challenging ourselves to say there is more in God. Oh yes, there is more. Brothers and sisters, once again, let's become students of history. There is more in God. Time will fail me, Hebrew says, to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. I came to shake your faith and shake your convictions and tear that limitation to let you know that this God you see is more than the frame of our experiences and we must tell him Maranatha come more of you the fullness of your counsel when I pray for hundred people and only two people are healed I turn my embarrassment into a theology rather than using it as a drive to press for deeper dimensions knowing that God is true and only men are liars I would turn my embarrassment and say the person who did not get healed I find a very intelligent theological reason and everybody who watches me they will frame their lives after my limitation let me tell you sincerely this God that we serve we are yet to scratch a bit of the, the vastness of the power the grace the possibilities that are in Christ and I believe in the name of Jesus that in our lifetime that we are hungry and desperate and unashamed enough to push to these dimensions that once again we will sign 
a signature in this generation that there were men and women who knew God and proved their knowledge of him through the exploits and the impact the Bible says but the people that do know their God they shall be strong capacity and then they will do exploits please sit down are we blessed so we must establish that fact is there stand in the ways and see as for the old path the old path is not the path of a denomination no the old path is you see God let me tell you how God works every time he's about to introduce himself in a new way he simulates a pattern around it for continuity are we together so that whoever wants to experience that dimension of God will have to learn the pattern he created so for instance when he was going to introduce because until Adam came there was no idea of expansion through reproduction it was only creation this is what confused the devil all of a sudden he sees a woman's stomach protruding and then another man comes out of it and say what is this every time God wanted to expand he would create but he invented the formula of reproduction through Adam and Eve that was why Satan looked for Cain that was the first man who was the product of reproduction Cain that meant Satan was seeing a formula God had put in man now that the womb of a woman can now make many more men he didn't know that the woman's womb could get pregnant again he thought Cain was the only one so he came to him <laughs> now we're not please sit down sit down sit down this is not we're not this is not where I'm going at all just just help me support my focus are we together <laughs> Every time you want a baby, you subscribe to the pattern that was created. Is that true? Salvation, when Jesus came, he didn't just save man. Do you know as powerful as God was and is, he did not cast sin out of men. He didn't stand to say, I God, Yahweh, I use my might as the creator of the heavens and the earth and I cast sin out of men because he had created a pattern the pattern says without the shedding of blood it is illegal to remit sins it's a pattern number two there is a pattern that says the wages of sin is death now when God came to the earth he himself had to submit to those patterns now listen carefully spiritual patterns hold the key to the exploits of the saints in this kingdom it takes more than a good desire it takes more than a kind well-meaning heart brothers and sisters hear me there are many well-meaning people well-meaning preachers the exploits that your pastor is having today is not just because he's a good man as wonderful as he is and his dear wife I can tell you that he has found like a spiritual archaeologist spiritual patterns these are the patterns that secure the glory of God so there is a pattern that is responsible for administering salvation are we together now you do not think salvation and then you are saved no that's not the pattern for it the pattern that administers salvation as we know new birth is found in Romans chapter 10 when you read from verse 8 to 10 is that true the Bible says the word is near you in your mouth and in your hearts the word of faith which we preach that if you will confess that's the pattern with your mouth the Lord Jesus believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead salvation is administered to you the formula is in the next verse it says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth salvation is i mean confession is made unto salvation so it is a pattern 
anybody who does not subscribe to that pattern is not saved it's as honest and sincere and simple as that there are spiritual patterns that are responsible for releasing and activating the blessing of the Lord upon the believer patterns that relate to giving for instance there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty it's not an information it's a pattern another spiritual pattern that supports your longevity is he who does not walk should not eat it's an advice that if you plan to be lazy forget about food because eating without walking will kill you this is a medical advice these are spiritual patterns so part of the ways you choose life is that anytime you see a plate of food in front of you ask yourself what work is this food going to support this is how to live long it's an advice are we together there is a pattern that is responsible for renewal the bible says has thou not heard seen has thou not heard the everlasting god the lord are we together that he is not weary he does not faint then the bible says even the young men will faint and the youth will be weary he says but they that wait is a pattern it's not just an information that that it is human to be weary the wear and tear the vicissitudes of life can beat down your focus your zeal and your power incorporate this pattern to your spiritual work and you will run and not be weary you will walk and not faint so every time you are weary and you are fainting that is an information that your pain is telling you you are violating a spiritual pattern hmm. the bible says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy are we together now so he gave you a pattern that encapsulates satan's work so for you to verify whether it is the devil search for these things is there stealing in it is there killing in it is there destruction in it the moment you see it you know that that is a pattern there is also a pattern that shows you when the kingdom of god shows up in a place it says the kingdom of god encapsulates these tripartite factors righteousness peace joy in the holy ghost this is a prophetic compendium of patterns road maps that lead to mysterious outcomes these are the principles that turn ordinary people to signs and wonders that we reign and we rule in this kingdom on the strength of the patterns we have found our possibilities are not defined by the love of God the same Lord is rich unto all they are predicated upon our comprehending the spiritual patterns so two people loved by God can be in Abia state sincere believers but their possibilities can be east and west it's not a measure of the love of God for them it is a measure of how far they have been able to discover the patterns that are responsible for the outcomes they desire this is a very powerful revelation the name given to this revelation is Jesus the way Jesus did not say I am life alone he said I am the way the methodology of the kingdom is God speaking to someone several people desire the anointing but there are spiritual patterns that control and govern both the reception and the administration of the anointing you see mastery makes difficult things look easy but behind them is a is a diligent study of their operations please hear me saints of god the quality of my life and your life in this kingdom will depend on how much we are willing to obtain grace from god and become students in the school of the spirit to search for the patterns not just to desire the outcome that those patterns produce to search for it 
this church is growing and increasing and making impact at a global scale because there is a pattern i assure you there is a pattern there is nobody sincerely who commands certain degrees of exploit who does not know what he is doing it's just that the the awareness of the mercy of god will make you just say look is the all glory to god but the truth is where you probe deeply they will sincerely tell you i am what i am by the grace of god but this grace was not showered on me in that i labored more than ye all there is a labor dimension of faith that helps you to birth certain spiritual patterns now my question very briefly before we pray is which spiritual pattern do you not know leave the one you know could it be that my life and your life you will say so there is a relationship between your words and your victory it's a pattern it says let the redeemed of the lord he already called them the redeemed but he says say so because everything starts from the realm of the spirit but will require authorization from the saints to be manifest it is always the spirit and the bride that says come so when the spirit says come he's waiting for the bride on earth to also say come when the spirit says lifted the bride must also say lifted it is the spirit and the bride that tells the world to come it's a pattern forever oh lord your word is settled not in your life in heaven it tells you the location where the word is settled it will take faith and engaging these patterns for it to become a reality in your life open thou my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law there is a spiritual pattern responsible for speed the bible says then the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of ahab even down to jezreel that means there is something you can engage in the spirit that will release a supply of that grace and your results become from a human standpoint it will look as if you held a charm can i tell you this now please listen very carefully every dimension of results you see listen carefully whether it came from a man of god or god as you call it or it came from a herbalist or it came from diviners are we together now if you ever see any result that is superhuman it was a manipulation of spiritual laws there is only one force and one power once have i spoken and twice that how many all if it ever works is because the power of god not necessarily god was involved in that process if god is not involved in that process it does not work and without him was not anything made including the result of a heathen without him was not anything made that was made but this is let me explain to you why it seems to happen even without their loyalty to god there are three dimensions of accessing the power of god in this kingdom maybe i'll wrap up with it tonight number one is the dimension of god's power and grace that comes through encounters direct encounters with god when you have a solid encounter with the god of the bible there is a dimension of power that is given to you as a token as a reward for your press for meeting him now the highest level of spiritual power that can be given to a man comes through that platform please listen carefully are we together now that when a man so presses beyond all the distractions and eventually you are able to touch the heart of god in a way that causes him to reveal himself to you the law is found in jeremiah 29 and verse 13 and you shall seek me he says and find me when you search for me with all your heart that means if you don't find me the diagnosis is that something in your heart is not seeking for me 
the jealousy of God mandates that all of you is directed towards him for you to really find him are we together yes so encounters what is an encounter an experience that makes God real an experience generally speaking that furnishes the reality of whether a person an idea whatever it is to you when you have it doesn't have to be a visionary in, in a visionary way but the assignment of an encounter is to create conviction without encounters the saints will not have conviction but I know whom I believe not just that I believe him I know whom I believe and I am persuaded it is on the strength of encounters that the apostle can say what shall separate us from the love of God it's not a memory verse it's a product of an encounter please listen to me you must trust God for the grace to press to when one encounter with God will answer many prayer points at once there are many many kinds of prayers you will not pray again when you really have an encounter one of my dear people will always say that when you have these encounters it will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life everybody say encounters you must desire encounters with all your heart there are certain dimensions of anointings for a generation no it will come through encounters and can I tell you this sincerely when it comes it has come it will be clear that the spirit of Elijah does rest upon Elijah if you are still doubting and hoping is there or it's not it's, then it means it's not there number two very quickly the second platform that affords us the opportunity to receive the unction and the possibilities to demonstrate the might of God in this kingdom is the mysteries or the principles of the kingdom such as what I'm teaching you now there is a dimension of the power of God invested in these principles you don't have to believe him to access it you just it is controlled by knowledge and understanding not intimacy you don't intimacy is not a condition to receive power at that level it is knowledge and understanding so I can ignore the God of the Bible and through the humility and meekness I can learn from people who have found these patterns they may not admit the God who delivered it like the secular the business principles they used to excel the leadership principles these are all principles if it ever works is because there is God in that equation now they may not desire an encounter with that God but understanding has brought them to a point where they are able to walk those principles and there is a dimension of his power invested in principles if God forbid not to play with your mind but if a terrorist decides to sow in rainy season the soil the earth will not refuse to produce because there is a pattern the power of God has already been in, it's already invested in that are, are we together now yes someone can be insulting God and still have a child after nine months because there is a pattern are we together now someone will insult God before he goes to bed and wake up in the morning and keep insulting again because there is a pattern it is the second level the key to receiving at that level is not intimacy the key to receiving at that level is understanding are we together the third platform is called covenant alignment let me explain it the third platform for receiving power in this kingdom is called covenant alignment please say covenant alignment and we 
We'll never settle for less We know there's more that's found in you We have to round up, listen Look at me Do you know the way God advances his kingdom, pastor is that when God wants to introduce a dimension of his possibilities to a generation he finds a man everybody say a man, a man. not man he finds a man and enters a personal covenant with that man through the sacrifice of alignment he enters a personal covenant with that man are we together now that covenant becomes the legitimate authorization for God to reveal that dimension of him in the earth. And for as long as that man is alive, any other person who must host that dimension of God must be able to do it in alignment to God and that system he has created. I pray that your eyes will be open to what I'm sharing with you. Hmm. So, there are men who are carrying anointings. There are men who are carrying mantles. But there are men who have spiritual systems. Don't be carried away by the body you are looking at. And it is not everybody, but this is true. Read your Bible and you will see that there are men, it was not mantles they carried. Abraham did not carry mantles. Abraham was a spiritual system that was referred to in Isaiah 51. That if you want to study what it means to be blessed in the kingdom, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that bore you. I called him and blessed him and increased him. Abraham is my recommended portrait for the blessing. You ever ignore that reality If you like serve God as much as you want He will refer you back to that pattern Pattern number two System number two Jacob Jacob is God's biblical pattern for encounters That every time you want to encounter God The individual that embodies that revelation Is Jacob Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof the walls and they that dwell therein when you read on it says this is the generation that seek thy face O Jacob or O God of Jacob until Jacob had an encounter there was no God of Jacob it was God of Abraham and God of Isaac in Genesis 28 Jacob lay in the night to sleep in a place called Luz that will later be changed to Bethel are we together now and the Bible says when he lay down to sleep suddenly he saw a ladder that connected the earth and heaven is it in your Bible I hope you know they were not parables these were things that actually happened and he saw angels ascending and descending and at the top of it was God are we together now and he began to speak to him and the bible says he got up and said the lord was in this place and i knew not the bible is not ashamed to leave jacob's mistake for us to learn that jacob made a clear mistake he admitted with all humility that i missed this opportunity for an encounter the next thing that will happen in jacob's life he was too innocent for an encounter the next episode of his life will be his pain in the house of laban after defrauding him after wasting his time god said let's try again now genesis 32 jacob dismissed his wives jacob dismissed his animals when he was alone god said let me see if you can get it this time around then came a man in the night listen carefully jacob held him and he said i missed it the first time i have learned through my pain the value of your presence i have learned through my pain listen carefully he said leave me for the day breaketh and jacob said i will not let you go unless now watch this let me show you how the god of jacob 
was being formed that God captured that experience and added his name on it and said you can study the God of Jacob by studying Jacob are we blessed these men were not carrying mantles they were spiritual systems the dimension of God committed to them is still valid today and then he said what is your name that means everything that has to do with a true encounter must affect your identity must affect your office must affect your authority because it's a name is a dimension of identification a name can represent a limitation like Jabez are we together what is your name and he says Jacob he says thou shalt no more be called Jacob for as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed and he touched his thigh that means the condition for a genuine encounter is that something must be in your life that makes you incomplete without God Jacob if you want an encounter I must do something to you that leaves you permanently deficient without me so I become the completer of your life then the Bible says he blessed him and the sun arose and he called that place Peniel the face of God for I have seen God face to face and my life is spared and God said Jacob congratulations you, you did not just qualify for an experience you have become a spiritual system to model how men can find God another another spiritual system was this mystery this mystery system disguised in a body we call Elijah the first manifestation of Elijah the spirit of Elijah was not in the man Elijah the first manifestation of that mystery was in a man called Noah <laughs> Goodness, my God, my God, my God. You see, Elijah is a spiritual system that foreruns revival. It's an apostolic and a prophetic system. It has nothing to do with a man. Every time God is about to come, Elijah must precede him. It's a pattern. So before the flood and the judgment, that spirit came in a man called Noah. Then when Jezebel and the prophets of Baal were persecuting the people of God, that system came again, embodied now in a man called Elijah the Tishbite. Are we together? When Elijah died, the pattern still remained. When I say died, you know what I mean. Now exited his duty here. Elijah returns back in a man who was found in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey. Is it in your Bible? He was no longer called Elijah. He was called John the prophet. He was not the Baptist. Baptism was a strategy to help him find Jesus. But Elijah was a prophet. Are we together now? Suddenly a man shows up. A spiritual system. So Satan studied that system and started his own too. The first of that system was Cain. And Cain built a city and named him after his child. And then we now see that there was another spiritual system called Nimrod Kush. Theologically speaking, he killed his father and married his mother. Samiramai. That's how he became Nimrod Kush. He, he manipulated a pattern that gave him so much influence and they wanted to build a city whose top would reach the heavens. And God knew they were going to do it. He had to be the one to come and scatter it. Are we together? Then we see another spiritual pattern represented in a she goddess called Jezebel. That Jezebel is not just a woman. Are we together now? Delilah is not just a woman. Delilah is a spiritual pattern that represents seduction. 
a spiritual system that destroys great men and great things that if you want to study how the great fall it is represented in this evil communication you call Delilah it's not a woman the spirit that was on Delilah can come on a man and it will be it will it is it is destruction through seduction that's how the pattern operates for Jezebel is a spirit that attacks influence by partnering with government every time Jezebel shows up she cannot be activated until she's in partnership with government so whether it's Herodias or Jezebel herself with Ahab the, when Jezebel comes it targets influence are we together Elijah also represents not just the prophetic and the apostolic but the spirit that births revivals within a territory Elijah was recommended as a case study when Apostle James was teaching people about prayer are we together he used an example he said Elijah was a man of like passion that means when you want to use prayer to change the spiritual climate of a territory study Elijah Elijah shot a territory for three and a half years I hope you know Elijah was not the only one who knew God there were other prophets remember under the custody of Obadiah don't you think one of them would have prophesied and said God forget about this man let me tell you this God honors these systems let me give you one more of this system this mysterious man called Samuel Samuel was not just a prophet Samuel was a mysterious man whose word never fell to the ground God had rejected Saul as king and was ready to lift David Samuel refused and David's destiny was in trouble because one man you thought God would bypass him God had to come and explain to him and say Samuel how long will you weep seeing that I've rejected please carry the horn Moses was a spiritual pattern look at this Moses is a man who is a stammerer and yet part of his spirit comes on 70 elders and they prophesied they could not keep quiet and yet that was what was in one man and he was moving every day the a part of the spirit in one man came on people who were elders with all their training they prophesied from morning till night it was this mistake that caused Saul his throne he thought men were just men and he said look the, the pressure was coming on him to offer the sack he said we can't wait for Samuel and when he finished Samuel came and said no you have done foolishly you would have allowed me to come and God would have established your throne forever now you have done this the kingdom is taken away from you this is not human worship I am showing you that the results we command in this kingdom are mysteriously tied I'm teaching you covenant alignment I think that's how we got here please spare me just a few minutes and we're done that means on earth today with all humility the spiritual system that represents faith is Kenneth Copeland as old as he looks and he may share something you may think is not Rema but he is an embodiment of a spiritual system by covenant that's why God will have to keep him long enough to make sure that that territory gets that grace before he transits. Are we together now? Reinhard Bonke was a spiritual system that represented the evangelistic. You will never work at a global scale ignoring that personality. This is not human worship. I'm showing you the third way to receive no matter how much you press into God he will refer you back to his system Benny Hinn today represents the healing ministry and that came from oral Roberts this, these things are not it's not an invention when that person who is the system dies God will find another person and enter a covenant that represents continuity 
John the Baptist was not just a prophet when Jesus came to the earth if Jesus ignored John the Baptist he would have been surprised even though he was the son of the living God for 30 years your Jesus walked under a closed heaven your Jesus read your Bible as the son of the living God yet his heavens were not open until he had to look for the system Jesus John did not listen when John was in the wilderness a formula was given to him that whoever you baptize and you see the heavens open that is the lamb so John would pour water and say no go John would pour water and say no go pour water then he looks at a 30 year old young man coming and says behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and Jesus said no suffer it to be so that all scripture this is a pattern that not even me will violate John said I am not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe Jesus said you are right but I am on earth now I must submit to that pattern and then the Bible says John held Jesus dipped him in water brought him out what does your Bible say and the heavens opened and then God now spoke and said this is my beloved son question what was he before and then listen he said this is my beloved son who has visited your crusade no in whom I am well pleased he said as a result of this submission hear ye him everywhere Jesus went they could not resist his ministry because there was a hear ye him anointing there is a grace do you believe what I'm saying now I know here and there you will always find exaggerations where people will use this to manipulate people but let me tell you this we can do nothing against the truth or the truth but for the truth this ministry you see there is a dimension of God's grace that has been committed to your pastor are we together now for as long as you do not discern and tap into it through honor through meekness and through alignment there are certain dimensions of grace that will never be reproduced in your life believe me when I tell you this Saul who later became Paul encountered Jesus Christ after he encountered Jesus Christ you would think that's the end Jesus now referred him back after an encounter he said go and wait somebody in the body will come and continue that thing to you Jesus referred him back why will you need someone else when you've met Jesus he still referred him back when you honor men it is not human worship when it is done within the jurisdiction of scripture you are discerning that there is a dimension of the investment of God upon this man otherwise certain results will not be possible listen there are results that are bigger than your personal spiritual life it is an elevation that the election of grace has taken you to are we together yes while it is true that many times we men of God would like to tell you everything you see is a perfect reflection of our spiritual lives it may not be entirely true there are dimensions of this elevation that is purely an election of grace and it is because of what God is doing and his program so encounters mysteries covenant alignment there are many people who came under certain mysterious graces that never beg even before they started knowing the principles of finance they started increasing they didn't even know why 
they were not keeping the principles at all but because is there any man in the house of Saul that I may bless him for Jonathan's sake not for his sake there are people who came under certain graces and their prayer lives entered certain dimensions before they themselves decided to be serious with prayer the same way you are joined to certain friends and without your intention you begin to become maybe a wayward person you see that now it's more than an information it's not just what they told you there was a transference of spirits too please listen to me i know that our time is gone but would we'll take even if it's two or three minutes to pray my charge to you tonight is that scattered in this scripture are the spiritual patterns that are responsible for the dominion of the saints now we can argue it some of you may disbelieve it but the truth remains the truth nobody rises by mistake in this kingdom no we engage these mysteries through light it's an ancient part we didn't invent it we only discovered it that when you find that part you begin to rise in a way as though the devil does not exist and i believe the burden that is on the heart of your pastor and his dear wife is to see that not only this precious assembly but that the entire city and indeed the entire eastern region that you come into a greater comprehension of these spiritual patterns there is something you can introduce to your business that will make people ask you do you know if if you see a gentleman today who maybe is just struggling or managing his life let's assume by next week you suddenly find out that he becomes a multi-millionaire in all honesty you will not ask him what did you do you will say where did you go to this kind of result is not about what you have done again where just be honest i will keep it is between me and you what where did you go to because there are some results that are that respond with the sequence of economy but there are others this one is the finger of god the bible says if it is the lord's doing it must be marvelous i'm saying this because there are extraordinary results that many of you will begin to produce from this night believe me results that will dumbfound principalities and powers that some of you will return back home and all of a sudden you will see that your prayer life is, is as though something rested upon you some of you will find out that you will open your bible and there is a straight line from genesis to revelation it's as though you've never read your bible again transference of spiritual possibilities for some of you you will find out that the book of remembrance is open over you the bible says and that night the king could not sleep and he said bring me the chronicles and they opened there were many people who did good but his eyes went to mordecai and said what shall be done to such a man there are some of you the pattern that you will see is what will activate favor exodus 3:21 and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty some of you are crying don't be ashamed of this you are looking at your family i'd like you to look in one minute and just say wow so if my father had known this if my sincere missionary parents as well meaning as they were if they only knew that there was a pattern that prove that provides speed that there is a pattern that can veto causes and yokes regardless the speakings of darkness and bring a man to a position of power in the spirit are you ready to pray?
just for one minute our time is up i'd like you to lift your voice and cry seriously lord i'm ready to shift to a higher dimension spiritually open my eyes to the mysteries and the patterns that empower my next dimension someone is praying i release my faith with your pastor so that you will produce real results for some of you you need a multiplication of function the current level of grace that you carry cannot produce the results you desire just for a minute lift your voice and pray some of you here are pastors you are trusting god for numerical increase i assure you there is a pattern there is a spiritual pattern responsible for growth responsible for increase it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less when we go hallelujah please look up let me just encourage you i'm sure that your pastor will come we may not have the time to minister to the sick i'd like you to come with your heart open tomorrow and trust god among the many things that i believe that god will be doing tomorrow is transference of graces graces are transferable there is no one it is never god's intention that a dimension of possibility resides and remains only with one person whenever he sends a word to jacob is because he intends for it to reach israel so come with your heart opened you are in ministry you are trusting god to really shift you some of you have prayer groups some of you you discern that there are graces that god is giving you that you are part of the prophetic program of god within the east of the niger please come with your heart opened some of you are trusting god for a release or a higher release of certain dimensions of grace discernment the prophetic come with your heart open hallelujah and i pray for you tonight inside and outside in the name of jesus let there be angelic activities on your behalf in the name of jesus christ we release all kinds of breakthroughs tonight we command all kinds of possibilities tonight in the name of jesus christ and i pray that as a result of this encounter may your hunger for spiritual things multiply in the name of jesus may your appetite for the things of the spirit be enlarged may your passion for god be increased in the name of jesus the lord bless you while we remain standing can we just raise our two hands and just speak in the holy ghost can we just be very very intentional about speaking in the holy ghost can we just speak in the Holy Ghost? Can we speak in the Holy Ghost? What people in the room can perceive, you are now understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and to show who is totally yielded to God. And that is why you have been here tonight is of um, immense covenant significance for us. And it's a very loud statement. Which is of joy. And for those of us who are watching, would you receive with me tonight the ministry of my apostle? Holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, hey, hey. 
in one minute in the studio and around following just cry for the spirit of revelation the spirit of revelation Paul prayed for the church and he asked that our hearts be illuminated flooded with light that we may know lift your voice and pray shali barakos kebranda gatosiada Shaleka Baruda Sine Balada Balakusia Hallelujah. Please take it high for me. There's, there's a song that has been in my heart, Pastor Dele. Ask and I'll give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on earth. One more time. Ask and I'll give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your love. Help us, Spirit of the Living God, grant us grace tonight in the name of Jesus. Seated, thank you, thank you very, very much. I came here with joy in my heart. I also came here with a burden in my spirit. It's an honor, Pastor Dele, thank you so much. It truly is an honor to be a contributor to help build the body. This has been my passion for many years to see that all together as a body that we become matured as far as spiritual things are concerned. And um, I don't know how far I'll be able to cover in this, this conference, but I pray that God will grant us grace. Wherever we stop, that, that will be fine for this time. I have a course content. Is it alright if we write? There is a course content for... I'm, I'm really, I'm really not, not interested in preaching as far as this conference is concerned. I think the idea is to communicate this truth and to really um, give it the justice it demands to get into our spirits. Hallelujah. And so I divided my, my session into three and um, we'll try to take the first part tonight and then in the morning, then we'll wrap up in the evening. It was just an attempt by the Spirit of God to continue where Pastor Poju, Pastor Godman and you know all of the ministrations that have come before me. Number one is the assignment. The assignment. I hope that we'll be able to cover a thorough understanding of kingdom advancement, the mandate of the church. If God grants us grace, we'll be able to look at um, three very important aspects of the assignment. Number one is understanding the cosmos. Number church, this system that God built himself believers. I really believe that this is a very major issue in the body of Christ because when the assignment is not thoroughly understood, all activities happening, but believers will not be built, believers will not be edified, and the kingdom would not advance. So the assignment. Number two, the second part is called, we are going to examine doctrine. 
the mystery of stature and maturity doctrine that will be the second part here we are going to be redefining terminologies that have been abused in the body of Christ either due to ignorance and then I hope that we'll be able to look at the pillars of the Christian faith under doctrine that the only way believers truly mature is doctrine and if we desire to see a mature church we must reintroduce back to the body of Christ more than personalized dealings more than visionary experience there must be a restoration of doctrine doctrine is the mystery that is responsible for the stature and the maturity of the body hallelujah um, and it is also the cure to heresies the cure to imbalances in the body is called doctrine so we'll look at that hopefully in the morning and then the last part of this as God grants us grace I would like to wrap up by examining a bit on the coming move of God I think it's important that we we have a prophetic approach to what we are dealing what is God doing this present truth what is he saying now we we'll look at God's end time agenda the mystery of Enoch and Elijah there are are two spiritual systems that are signposts they signify something in the spirit as far as the move of God is concerned and then I hope that we'll be able to look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit if that is possible we cannot talk about the global harvest and the end time agenda of God without ignoring the Holy Spirit without involving the Holy Spirit and giving him his place it was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church and the Holy Spirit is called the Lord of the harvest he's not only comforter it's a name that we have even forgotten you know he's called the Lord of the harvest the Lord of the harvest is not an angel the Lord of the harvest is not Jesus Jesus is the reason for the harvest the Lord of the harvest is the Spirit of God And then, probably if God grants us grace, we'll look at the ministry of power as an end time strategy. So we have a lot to cover. Um, let me apologize in advance wherever. This is a school, so whatever I'm not able to cover, please, I'd like you to hold on to Pastor Dele's um, garment and pursue him diligently he's a veteran as far as the exegesis of scripture is concerned so he will be able to do justice to that father help us in the name of jesus we have come to learn we have come as students in the school of the spirit we have come laying our pride our prejudices with our hearts open to hear you speak to us we are ready to grow we are ready to be built we are ready to be chiseled like living stones so that we can fit accurately into this structure. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will grant us grace. Grant us grace, abundance of grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So let's, let's start with the assignment. While, while I sat back there listening to Pastor Dele share, I was already very blessed. You know, when you read Acts chapter 1, very powerful charge you gave, sir. All right? You could just reduce the volume a bit so that it doesn't distract. Thank you. In Acts chapter 1, you see, the Bible lets us know all through the life of Jesus. The disciples did not really have an opportunity to understand the full scope of of what he came to do are we together now even though Jesus taught in his earth work he taught them on the fundamentals of the kingdom but because they were not filled with the Holy Spirit there were things they could not bear Jesus himself said it I have many other things to tell you some of those many things was what he spent 40 days telling them 
you understand now he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you and then some of the things i said that you did not understand he will bring back to your remembrance many times you will hear them remember they will recall certain things jesus said and did but it's important for us to understand the assignment because not understanding our corporate mandate as believers not understanding where we are coming from and where we are going to it's it's is one of the reasons why there is a lot of confusion in the body of christ there is an old story that predates our existence we came in the middle of history and it's only intelligent that we look back to be able to glean by the spirit what happened what is this all about church services what are they all about miracles what are they all about breakthroughs nothing was supposed to be celebrated in isolation everything was supposed to find its credence when and if connected to kingdom so you don't just celebrate breakthroughs miracles prophecy healing the challenge today is we have caught them away and we 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 have not connected them to kingdom so whilst we celebrate them we learn about them we find out that it is not ultimately leading to kingdom advance rather in many regards it's just the promotion of flesh and the agenda of men are we together now so what is this all about what is our going to church about do we have to go to church what is the preaching about why will a man leave his career and leave everything that seems to represent his self-worth in the name of answering a call what what is the call about now he claims he has some conviction or he was sent by god and would risk his life put himself in trouble his family in trouble for the rest of his life over uh, advocacy of a message that sometimes looks very confusing over a god who doesn't seem to show up and say thank you and dies in the process missionaries have died advocating a message that many are yet to understand there is something called the reproach of christ and many people have left the excellency of the palace to bear upon them that reproach what is this all about please pay attention i came from a very strong evangelical background just like pastor daly was sharing and in all honesty um of course we're trained to just love god we, i saw very sincere people who were passionate about missions and all of that but we didn't have a very intelligent education as to what christianity was about and did you know pastor pick a believer at random in no particular order even a worker and ask him what is this about he would tell you it's about the advancement of the agenda of a church he would tell you i do this because i love my pastor he may tell you i do this because i love jesus he would tell you i do this because i i just want to make heaven all kinds of reasons the now i'm speaking to the body of christ and i'm speaking with every sense of humility and regard to the body but the extent of cluelessness that the average believer has as to the motivation behind everything we do in the kingdom is the reason why we easily fall prey to the devil and the reason why there is no sustainability in the things that we do the bible talks in luke chapter 1 um dr luke was speaking and he spoke about the things that are most surely believed things that were done from a standpoint of persuasion and conviction now theologically speaking you know that um, the bible genesis 1 verse 1 the bible says in the beginning it was just a framework to now help us begin to understand god's program in time it says in the beginning not from the beginning god created the heavens and the earth we do not exactly know what moment in time that happened and we do not even know what happened before that time but one thing we know for sure 
is that there has we are in the middle of many dispensations past and there are many dispensations ahead of us the bible starts in the middle of a story and the bible ends with the beginning of another one that's that's something this is this is this is truth from scripture are we together so in the beginning god created that was not the first thing he was doing as god there were other things he had been doing what they are we don't know we just know that he created the heavens and the earth that was not the first time otherwise he would not be god there were other the activities that he was doing before that time the bible does not give us the luxury of having a thorough knowledge but we know one thing for sure the bible says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth it does not directly give us an opportunity to know why he did it the first time because adam was not in the picture when that happened why he created the heavens and the earth it was not for an, an accommodation for himself he was already existing if he created the heavens and the earth he was not living in either realms heaven is his throne not his house uh -uh. are we together now yes so the bible says then it jumps to verse 2 theologically speaking is called the gap theory and attempts to explain what happened the bible is written in summary so sometimes you may not really see the time lag between genesis 1 verse 1 genesis 1 verse 2 were ages apart the bible now says there was darkness there was void verse 2 it says darkness was upon the face of the deep now this darkness we see in many scriptures i don't want to go into that now because there's a lot for us to cover you will see that a product of the judgment of lucifer it didn't just happen because according to the character of god everything he creates is good so he couldn't have created a heaven and an earth that is good and then all of a sudden we see darkness it was a system because flood in scripture is always symbolic of judgment waters talk of people waters talk of abundance flood always in scripture talks of judgment so when the enemy comes comma like a flood in judgment the spirit of god will raise a standard against him you understand now so the flood there came as a result of the judgment of lucifer when job we know again theologically that the book of genesis people argue that it predated job other theologians agree that it was immersed between genesis 1 and the last um, we're not really interested we know that it's somewhere somewhere between genesis 1 and then the last book of genesis but then the bible tells us that there was a man called job who feared the lord and eschewed evil tragedy fell upon that man and in the height of his frustration the bible says he summoned god very dangerous statement that a man can summon god and god came chapter 38 and verse 1 when god finally came through a whirlwind to job there was a very deep discussion it says that when he came he began to ask job and there was a discussion let's look at the first four verses am i boring you already this is a minister's conference so wherever we stop we stop if we if we get somewhere we just pray in tongues and we go to bed verse 2 who is he that darkened counsel by words without knowledge do you know what this is god was saying job you've been saying a lot of nonsense from the standpoint of ignorance i've been listening to you patiently now i have come you have compelled the discussion and he asked him a few questions verse 3 say guard up your loins like a man for i will demand of thee and answer me now this is a communication of the mysteries of creation question one where was thou when i laid the foundations of the earth you don't find that in genesis 1 no that was not there uh -uh. this was the creation before the recreation that we call creation there was an actual foundation laying ceremony where is that foundation today because geography tells us the earth is round and here we see please keep that scripture that there is a real foundation declare if you have understanding next question it says who laid the measures thereof if thou knowest 
or who stretched the line upon it verse 6 it says whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened and who laid the cornerstone thereof a ceremony happened that day verse 7 this is the ceremony founded it says the morning stars I don't want to go into discussing who the morning stars are and the sons of God are wait to oh, keep that scripture there Jesus had not yet died and there was still that mention of sons of God who were they <laughs> Ah, goodness I'm sorry, I don't sound sarcastic I mean, I'm just amazed at the ignorance in the But You know, the more we know God Honestly, it should bring us back to our knees Because a lot of the nonsense we pride ourselves in While we continue to pride ourselves The realm of the spirit is surprised At the vastness of our ignorance And yet the pride that follows that ignorance Look at this scripture Look at it, it's in your Bible that there was a day brothers and sisters we never there were no men when god was recreating the earth genesis 1 verse 2 it was only the spirit of god and the voice of god light be light be light be until adam came but god is saying before this your story there was another one You need to know this to know why you need to know this to know why he's bringing barrenness. Then you will not you will now know why he gave you an anointing to heal. If you do not understand the story, you will be in the middle of a history you don't understand. So why is he giving us power? Why does he want all men saved? You see why evangelism is not effective because there is no history that supports that provides the power and the force. There is an old story that we must understand. Are we blessed? You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to. One more time. You are brooding yeah, over every darkness. You are causing. Keep that scripture there. So the Bible says, when the morning stars sang together, these were still people who were worshipping the Lamb. So when you have this revelation and you worship God, you will know it's a privilege. Because way before the agenda of our dispensation came, there were people no blood than us, as far as the quality of their creation is concerned. These angels, I, will, I hope I have the time, I will teach you the material of creating angels was not dust no angels were created from quantized light it's in your bible the material of their creation is light lucifer being a cherub he was specially crafted the the garden of eden was a similitude of the throne that was created for lucifer because his assignment man the assignment of jesus to our dispensation was Lucifer's assignment to the dispensation of the inhabitants. Thou was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. It's in your Bible. Lucifer, the first occupant of the garden of Eden was not Adam. No, it was Lucifer's garden. So you understand the vendetta between Lucifer and mankind. There is an old story. Lucifer wanted what God gave man because he wanted a situation where he could run a parallel government we've thought that Lucifer wanted to dethrone God no, no, no mm -mm. Lucifer was not looking for an ability to dethrone God you want to know the agenda of Lucifer look at the system of the Antichrist it does not seek to dethrone it seeks to run a parallel government so Lucifer never wanted to dethrone God But he wanted to run a government So you could choose either God or him And don't downplay that agenda Because he led one third of the angels They believed that agenda was possible Lucifer is someone who there is a lot of lessons to learn from oh dear i wish i wish that um this was a night vigil the last the first thing we hear about lucifer after the judgment is that he was cast down to the earth humiliated 
This man landed the earth and was roaming around. The next time we see Lucifer, he had the keys of the earth and he was talking to Jesus, bow to me. You should respect such a man. I drove you down from heaven and just in a few years you have deceived the entire kings and made them loyal to you and you come to Jesus and say this is the progress report from the time I fell from heaven till now I have gotten the keys all the glories of the world are now under my influence what did he tell the kings if we do not understand this I will teach that in the last session the coming move of God we must understand the name of Satan Satan and that name devil these are names that if we do not understand the seductive deception that the spirit of the Antichrist is bringing over the body. Intelligent kings gave up their will, their mind, and they said, we will bow to you. Satan fell from heaven, humiliated, roaming around the earth for so long, when the Greek creation in Genesis 1 verse 2 and 3 was happening, he was a witness. It was not only God alone who was speaking. Satan was a witness. He was seeing it. There's no time I would have shown you again that among all the beings who had fallen from heaven, Satan is only one of them. Satan is not the only person who had offended God. There are many other offenders. We do not know what dispensation and what their offense were, but we know today they are still bound in everlasting chains. Satan is not one of them. That means they are even worse than him. And the Bible says they were bound for the sake of the elect. It's in your Bible. Wow. Then you will understand why the lake of fire was created. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. I hope you know. That's where Satan will be casted there. It can be his kingdom. The lake of fire is part of his God's invention. It's part of his justice system. Let's pray in the spirit in one minute. Shilaruski barando shalakruski badiana. Mighty God. Masobra tasile heshene katosia katabra. Skadabrande galekosia dabalatusia. Honestly, Pastor Dele, I believe that one of the things we must begin to press for as we see the clock ticking to the coming of Jesus, we must cry for the spirit of revelation in reality. Not so that we can preach sermons and make a name for ourselves. Believe me when I tell you there is a lot of ignorance. Occultists know what I'm telling you. Many people who have studied other religions. What do you have to say this? The Bible talks about the book of Enoch. Now uh, please, our line community, this is just a communication because it's in scripture. So that we don't have people who now misunderstand what we are saying. The book of Enoch is a book that the Bible itself recognizes. Enoch is the seventh man from creation. Are we together now? I will teach that in the last session. He is one of the two signs that must happen before the coming of Christ is the mystery of Enoch and the mystery of Elijah they were not just men they were spiritual systems that signify something are we together now? you cannot understand the coming move of God until you understand Enoch and Elijah Malachi tells us before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Elijah is the spirit that always foreruns revival. Wherever God is about to show up in a city, Elijah must proceed. He has an assignment to restore the altars of the Lord. That will deal with it. I'm just running ahead of myself. We have a serious discussion here. But I'm saying that the powers and the principalities that we attempt to rebuke and do all of this they are aware of this you see the word exousia when I teach on the ministry of power the word exousia there are four words that are used to signify power and authority one is called iskos one is called kratos the other is called dunamis and the last is called exousia dunamis is the outworkings of the power of the spirit exousia is the outworking of the authority that comes through enlightenment 
so there is something that leads to exousia there is something that leads to dunamis are we together now merely just confessing scripture and just saying in the name of jesus i command this devil to go just because jesus said in my name if that were that easy there would be no need for a 40 days lecture because he already gave them the name and they went and returned back and said even the devils now he was teaching them something why teach them doctrine again when you had given them the name before he died oh and they return back with that power so there is an old story the first occupant that was that was in eden the garden of the lord he was perfecting beauty people say lucifer was a musician well the, the, lucifer was not a musician no lucifer's assignment was the light bearer this is the bible son of the morning his name was given he was the light bearer the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom it was an assignment because you see your age in the realm of the spirit or in the throne room is measured by how much light you emit which is a product of how much of the face of god you have seen what did the bible say when we behold him we are changed it's not a principle to this it's an old principle that anybody who beholds god you have to be changed now by reason of lucifer's assignment the opportunity to have that frequent contact with god who is light and it was on the strength of his illumination that he said i will exalt myself above the stars of God I will be like the most high and the Bible called that contemplation iniquity until iniquity was found not sin iniquity rebellion are we together now and then there was war in heaven and you know all of that all of that and then now God put man by the way let me say this the garden of Eden is still intact very intact the garden of eden was not in this three-dimensional realm the earth as we know it now has been um it's lost its original design the spiritual architecture of earth that included eden is not what we see now we are matured and spiritual enough to know that because when you read the book of revelation eden is still there the tree of life is still there are we together now the only tree that we no longer see is the tree of the knowledge of the good of good and evil because by that time we've all made our choices so we have chosen life and so there will not be need for that other tree again those trees trees in the bible were not just they are symbolic of men he shall be like a tree planted by the streams of water are we together now yes when we understand this then we'll understand why satan came the bible tells us that when god created adam and eve he gave them instructions and he left them he would come in the cool of the day it was not a difficult thing to interface with the realm of the spirit as we have now that you have to pray and cry for visions and no 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 it was not like that god would come in the cool of the day and fellowship with man and the bible says satan now notice according to spiritual ranking satan did not have the authority to confront adam we never see a conversation between satan and adam satan had to respect that spiritual organogram he respect that spiritual organogram he came to adam through eve and today he still wants to get the adam the christ through his bride the eve of that adam that's why satan continues to come to us the church because we are the eve of that second adam are we together now and the same strategy he used over eve is what is still coming now the seduction that leads to deception did god really say that is the theme did god really say he does not say it now by speaking he says it by using situations and circumstances but it's still the same question did god really say you will rise did god really say the church will grow he will use things when you understand the strategy of the devil paul said do not be ignorant of the devil's devices is the word stratomai his methodologies
So there was there is an old story. Even Satan is called that old serpent. There was a lamentation in heaven that that old serpent had been casted to the earth. He said, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Look how dangerous this guy was. That when he fell to the earth, there was a lamentation. They said, Those in the earth, I, I really feel sorry for you because someone, a stranger, has come to your domain. And the Bible said he is angry. So, anger, this thing called anger, is a revealer of the presence of spirits. It's not just the issue of attitude. Uh uh-uh. uh. There is a dimension of anger that normal men should not have. If your anger exceeds that dimension, it calls for the introduction of the power of God in your life. Because ordinary men do not have that level of anger. Now you understand where terrorists get their empowerment. You should, humans by default cannot stretch beyond certain levels of brutality. It is not given to men. Watch an accident happen. They won't ask you whether you are a Christian or you are a Muslim. Everybody comes. Those are men. But when you see a man who can kill you and butcher you and not feel anything. Someone who fell with anger is at work in this system. We really need to know what we are after. Remember we are looking at the assignment. Is it true that the assignment is to build a building as important as that is? Is it true that the assignment is to get membership as important as that is? Is it true that the assignment is to look good and teach well and hold conventions and conferences? Is that really it? Does it sound like it to you now? No. When man fell, there are three levels, Pastor. Please, while you are sitting, just be praying for me. Let me just contain myself and be able to constructively communicate something this night. When man fell, there are three levels of perception that God designed in man. The highest was supposed to be discernment, followed by reason, then emotions, in that order. If you ever switch them, there will be a consequence on man. Discernment should be his highest faculty of perception, followed by reason based on principles and then emotions. For as long as that order is honored, the devil will never be able to penetrate man. His assignment is to find a way of switching because there is a weakness with emotions, the impulses of feelings. I need to say that so that you will know what happened to Eve. Are we together now? Yes. Satan was not merely talking to her. Uh -uh. He was seeing something in the realm of the spirit he wanted to disconfigure. Because until that happens, he will not be able to attack her. And he used words. Discernment. Then reason. Based on the logic of scripture and the principles of life. Then emotions. Now, emotions are very powerful. Are we together? They connect us to people, they connect us to principles, they connect us to our environment. But emotions have a weakness. You should not express them at a moment for too long. They have a consequence. So they are short term. If you understand this, Satan switched it. That was the idea behind a concept that is hardly understood in the body called covenant. Covenant was a system God invented to ensure man remains stable even though he is an emotional being. So he created a system that overrides emotions so that you are sponsored by another framework that is more than what you feel, more than what you think. Are you seeing now? Because if you depend on emotions, the day you love God, you may pray. The day you don't love God, you see that covenant service, service in the house of God is called covenant because your emotions can make you feel bad because of cold and you won't come to church. But a covenant is a system that was invented to help override your emotions and maintain consistency. It's not about Old or New Testament. No, it's more than that. So man fell. Let's, let's hurry up. Let's make sense of this. Man fell. Watch this. The Bible says when man fell, 
the Lord God, he called him the talking spirit. That he came in the cool of the day and did not see Adam. God did not find Adam. Where can I hide from your presence? But now he's not seeing Adam. Because look at the question God is asking. Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. He says, who told you? You have begun to listen. Someone has introduced an information. Who told you you were naked? You see now, the solical realm. There has been an activation of your emotions. Who did this? Who told you? And he said, the woman that you have kept with me. Now, let me share something very powerful. In the kingdom, you transfer power by transferring responsibility. When the Bible says, do everything without complaining or arguing, it's a very powerful advice. Do you know the moment he transferred responsibility to the woman, God did not talk to him again. He said, woman, now that this man has transferred authority to you, if the woman kept quiet, she will become the head of man immediately. Yes. This is Bible. Everything I'm telling you is scripture. Woman, what is this that you have done? The woman now said, the serpent, he beguiled me. You see where Satan became the... She transferred authority by blaming now satan did not complain that's what made him the god of this world so you now see why jesus stood before pontius pilate and when they were talking to him what did he do yes sir satan became the god of this world now watch this god banished man out of eden Eden was not destroyed. There's no record in scripture that Eden was burnt with fire. No. He banished man out of Eden to now what we call our earth. And two things protected Eden. One, the cherubims. Two, the flaming sword. That means it was not just a natural place that needed gates like this. I told you Eden is still intact. Eden was lifted from our domain. And all we had was this, our stratosphere and this, our atmosphere. Eden is still intact hallelujah man now began to walk through his senses now let me explain something very briefly and then we'll now begin to make sense of everything i'm saying don't forget what we are dealing with the assignment all of this drama i'm acting is to get us to really understand the assignment this is where our message corporately comes out from are we blessed? Yes, yeah. Until Adam and Eve, there was no other dispensation recorded in Bible where reproduction happened. No. Every time God wanted to multiply, it was through creation, not reproduction. Our dispensation would be the first to see that invention. Are we together now? So Satan, in all the archives of knowledge he had, never knew that it was a possibility that there could be multiplication through reproduction listen very carefully and you understand why barrenness why all of these things so that it is on the strength of that knowledge that anointing can flow through you when you are praying for a barren woman you are not just attesting to the fact that you are a man of god you are coming from the standpoint of intelligence and the realm of the spirit knows that you are not just a dispenser of power blindly you are coming full of knowledge are we together now yes satan was happy because according to him he believed there would only be two people on earth so his focus was who else will be created he did not know that a strategy was now put in man are we together now suddenly the bible says and adam knew his wife satan began to see the stomach of a woman protrude what is in that stomach he had never seen reproduction and all of a sudden she gave birth to cain you now see what made satan come to cain cain was innocent what did cain do another entity so if a woman can produce another entity that means in a short time the earth will be filled with bodies that the spirit of god can rest upon and they can fulfill god's agenda and satan said let's get into that man then abel now came 
and Satan said, no, Cain, I have to walk through you to kill Abel. What is the whole agenda? It's a depopulation agenda. Does that make sense to you what is happening on earth? That a depopulation agenda is not some group. It's an old agenda. Satan had tried through dispensations and failed. Satan hates men because men have bodies. A body has thou prepared for me. Find out how many people died because a child was born. Moses. Find out how many people died. Are we together? Listen, this is helping to now make sense that the thing which is, is the thing which has been. So when you see, whether it is terrorism, whatever it is, you now, when you are praying, you pray from the lens of this intelligence that we just found ourselves in the middle of history. This thing is an old story. It's not about the foundation in your family. That story is deeper than that. It's not about the devil wanting to make you poor or not wanting you to have a child. That's, that is a little piece of the old story. And Cain killed Abel. When he killed Abel, now theologically speaking, they say Cain and Abel are twins because the Bible just said Adam knew his wife once and we see these two come, right? But then the Bible now says again that Adam knew his wife again very dangerous statement that was a discovery that was going to shock satan that this potential to give birth is theoretically infinite that made the woman dangerous you now see why satan looks for women conduct deliverance for 10 people eight of them will be women it is not a, oh dear I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. For a very long time, I wondered why the devil would not let women rest. Is it just because they have a womb? Is it because they are beautiful? Is it because men pursue them? No, I found the reason. Satan listened carefully to what Jesus said or God said. He said, the seed shall bruise the head. Are we together now? Yes. There's something about women and the anger that their presence creates to the gate of hell. No wonder the first person to see the resurrected Christ was a woman. The first person to see Christ resurrected was a woman. Let's get back to our discussion. The Bible now says Adam knew his wife again. And she bore him a child. And he named the child Seth. He says, and men began again to call upon the name of the Lord. Now, but watch this. The Bible now said this guy called Cain, even though he killed his brother, even though he talked with God, he did not change. That's a lesson I can spend all night there. That just talking with God alone does not equal transformation. Cain was talking with God, an encounter that very few people have had, yet it did not change him. Proximity to the word, proximity to spiritual activities does not produce transformation. It means we have to invent another formula such that all those who come close to us as they are listening and they are in church for many years, we shouldn't make that assumption that just because they are hearing the word of God, they are changing. The first person we see as a man talking with God directly in rebellion and you know what the first statement was? It's not I worship you. It's not I love you, your majesty. The first word that came from man to God aside from Adam and Eve is am I my brother's keeper? Here's where the issue of relationship came. Am I my brother's keeper? Why should I have any business with my brother? Provided it does not support my interest. This is the book of the beginnings. Everything. You can literally trace everything about men. I hope God is speaking to us. And I pray that I'm making sense. 
Hallelujah. From that time, every time Satan found a man, three things, Pastor. Three. Don't forget this, please. Every time Satan finds a man, he's interested in three things. Number one, the handing over of the will of that man to him. Number two, the building of a system that is loyal to him. The Bible says, and Cain departed from the presence of God. Are we together? And when he departed from the presence of God, that means willfully, he was no longer in submission to the authority of the kingdom. And the Bible says he built a city. From that day, every time Satan finds men, he's obsessed with building cities. The Tower of Babel, Darius, building Babylon, Herod, till tomorrow. Every time Satan finds men, his obsession is to build a system and a city that does not honor God. This is the system we call Babylon, a representation of the Antichrist system. This is the system and the operation that controls our social environment that we call cosmos. Are we together now? And Satan had Satan did that by programming a set of beliefs and an approach to life. The Bible calls it in one word aeon, the thinking pattern that comes with the age. So he says, Genesis, I mean Romans chapter twelve and verse one. I beseech you, brethren, therefore, it says by the message of God, that ye offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God he calls it your reasonable act of worship or service verse 2 he says and be not conformed to this world it's not the word cosmos it's the word aeon there is a thinking pattern like a software that is the that is the mindset that is responsible for this architecture we call Babylon so the three Hebrew boys said no we will not bow to you. O oh, king, we respect you. But when it has to do with building a government and a system that is not consistent with kingdom, we will not bow. And there was a consequence. I don't have the time to go to the book of Daniel and show you, but please do well to read the entire book of Daniel. You will find out, sir, that when it had to do, Satan never projects himself. He projects self. Once it is self, Satan is glorified, even if it is not him. You read Revelation 13, the same thing. Satan does not come out to say, I am Satan. He just says, anything that is not God is welcome. Nebuchadnezzar built whose image? Please talk to me, whose image? So the moment you find yourself magnifying and glorifying self, don't ever be deceived. It is still Satan masquerading to an agency he has designed called self. So when you notice as a man of God, whilst you teach, you don't just sit there and just religiously say as the spirit leads. You can bring teachings that dethrone self in people because every manifestation of self, I tell you, is Satan. When Cain built a city, he named it after his son to glorify himself. When Nimrod Cush in Genesis 11, theologically speaking, you know that Nimrod killed his father and married his mother, Semiramai, who is purported to be the queen of heaven. Are we together now? Yes, that's theology. Nimrod Cush gathered the people. They went to the land of China and he says, go to come. Let us build brick and mortar and let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens now there are many theological debates whether that was a physical kingdom or spiritual kingdom one thing we know is that it was a threat because god himself came down to destroy it the fall of man is not just about sinning against god uh -uh. it's deeper than that the fall of man is not just about disobeying God. The fall of man is an attempt to glorify self. So just because you are free from sin does not mean the journey has finished. There is the next assignment to dethrone self. If we don't teach believers this, the moment they, that's why we have many people in church who get born again and say, I'm born again for 10 years. Now he becomes a deacon, now he becomes a worker, and you still see self. You are not free 
until self dies. No matter how, how born again you are, if self is still alive, there is a legitimate ground for the devil to be glorified in and through your life. Are we blessed? So man fell. From that time, all that we see happen, listen carefully, is a battle of two kingdoms. Right until Acts chapter 1, when Jesus rounded up his lecture. Please understand, it doesn't matter whether you are talking about the poetic books, the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch, the poetic books, and, and the prophets, minor prophets, major prophets. Now you come to all of the other books, Gideon. All of those characters is just the passage of time. The real story. From the time man fell, there was a battle. And it's been a battle of two kingdoms. Replaced by different actors. But the same battle. What is the battle? Light over darkness the kingdom of light and an antichrist system when God entered a covenant listen carefully when God entered a covenant with father Abraham and that covenant brought out a people a people who were carved out immediately Satan knew that the savior who would redeem the people must come out of these people israel became a threat everywhere they went nobody cared whether they hurt or anybody or not once you were a jew satan suspected that the savior that seed that will bruise the head of the serpent would come out of there You now see what happened when Jesus made that declaration finally. Because Satan kept suspecting people. A prophet will arise, he will suspect, is that the Savior? Then the prophet will die. A prophet will arise, someone else will arise, and Satan will keep suspecting. Finally, John the Baptist arose, and he, Satan kept speaking to the scribes and the Pharisees. Are you the one to come? Why was he interested about that one to come? John further confused them. Who are you? He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. What kind of description is that? Finally, a young virgin is minding her business one day, celebrating like every other lady, preparing they were going to see her parents. They had even given a down payment. She got up one morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Getting ready to prepare herself and listen to the lectures from the rabbi. An angel suddenly appears. Bringing glad tidings. And he says you are favored. And she wondered what sort of salutation is this now. She had read that once upon a time Emmanuel would come. She had read that once upon a time would come the burden, this corruption, this bondage of corruption upon people will be lifted. It's amazing how many things you have read in the Bible that you don't know you are the one. We really appreciate you for watching our videos. Like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you.